Hello everyone. In this episode, I will explain to you how to export an animation as OBJ sequence from Das Studio. This is technically a video for one of my Patreon supporters, Serge. Hello, Serge. I hope you find this useful. Serge contacted me and said, hey, I need to export an OBJ sequence from my animation from Das Studio. And I found a script on the Das Studio forums that used to work with Das Studio 4.12. Sadly, times have moved on and we now have Das Studio 4.15 already. My goodness, time flies when you're having fun, isn't it? And that no longer supports that script. So when you run the script, it, it no longer works. So some underlying, I suppose, API changes have caused some functions to not work anymore. I've looked at the script. I couldn't really figure out what it was. I will keep looking, of course. But in the meantime, I've worked out a workaround and I thought I will share it with you. I hope this works. What you will need, ingredients for the puzzle are uh, the full version of animate that is what we need not so much because we want to create anything with any blocks but we need a function that allows us to export an mdd point cache from that studio and only the full version of animate has that built in that's just a thing that comes up if you don't have that the, the option won't show up and we need blender because we're going to go from that studio to blender let blender then go ahead and import whatever we give it and then export that as an obj sequence i will show you how it works step by step i have a dramatically exciting super short animation here at which i have a sphere primitive created in das studio that jumps up and down. The only special thing about this is that it's not built out of two keyframes, it's built out of one keyframe at every frame. So all these little triangles here, they are in fact keyframes. I've done this basically by just setting it up with three keyframes, one at the front, one at the very end, and then one in the middle where the where the sphere jumps up. Then I turned that into an anti block and then I baked this back onto the keyframe time. I'm just so that I have a keyframe at every frame, really. I'm saying that because if you're working with any blocks, if your animation is made of any blocks, make sure you go and bake them back to the studio timeline. You can do that by right clicking on the gray area here and just selecting bake to studio keyframes just so that you have keyframes at that point you can delete all the anti blocks from your timeline and you just end up with a lot of densely populated keyframes just like that so in order for the mdd import into blender to work we need two things we need an obj a static obj of the first frame of the animation so make sure you park your playhead at the very beginning of the animation an obj that we're going to export and then we're going to go and export the mdd point cache so let's do that with the sphere selected also very important don't select nothing or the wrong thing just make sure the sphere is selected hide all the other nodes in your scene that's also important just make sure the one item that you want to export has this little eye icon here everything else should look like this so all the other nodes are invisible make sure you know the only the object that you want to export is selected as well as visible everything else needs to be invisible and then you head over to file export and then you select obj so wavefront obj here i've got a folder here on my desktop it's called obj sequence test and i'm gonna call this one just in the root folder i'm gonna call this one sphere and that'll be an obj i'm not too worried about the the size in blender so usually you have to divide by 100 when you bring something into blender and then you know do the same on the way back we're not going to do that we're just going to use the das studio option here and leave everything at 100 so just das studio leave everything as it is and hit accept that's the first part done the second thing is that we now need to export the animation that happens almost identical with everything still selected as it was before head over and say file export and we're going to call that sphere mdd perhaps and at the bottom here what you want to do is select mdd by animate and this is the option that only comes up if you have the full version of animate so make sure you have that installed and activated and select that and uh, sphere mdd dot mdd while well, we have mdd twice and not a problem <laughs> we just go and save it out now this will now come up with another little export dialog here and this i would suggest you set that to das studio 
I haven't tried the other options. Dastery seem to have worked fine for me. Ignore invisible nodes, also very important, so that anything else that's in your scene is ignored. And then we're going to go and hit accept. That'll go through every single frame and export basically the changes in regards to the first object, the, the static OBJ that we've also exported, it changes in regards to that object will be saved. Very um, kind of, you know, very space saving way to do this. Now let's go ahead and have a look at Blender. I'm using Blender 2.91 for this brand new default scene, like so. And the first thing I'll do is I'll go and delete the cube with the X key. If you're not familiar with Blender, just hit X and then follow that. You can leave all the other objects in place. Not a real problem if you don't. And then we're going to go and import the first OBJ from the sphere or from our object that I've just exported here. So file, import, OBJ, or wavefront OBJ it's called. And then we're going to go and hopefully find that on my desktop called OBJ sequence test. And under sphere we have, uh, where is it? Wasn't it called Sphere? Didn't I call it Sphere? Maybe I haven't. Maybe it's called MDD. Fine, whatever. It's also, it's also good. <laughs> That's what we want to do. Under the geometry here, I would suggest you untick that box that says split by object. So if you have a single sphere, it doesn't really matter. But if you have a large object like a Genesis figure, make sure split by object is deselected. And that's really all you need to do. Then head over to import OBJ. And that will kind of look weird because it is now uh, at 100 times the size than it should be. So zoom out by scrolling the mouse button out or simply press the full stop key on your numpad that will frame up that one particular selected object. Blender is a little bit weird. So if you're not used to Blender, you know, this, these things can trip you up. This is why I'm explaining this step by step, just in case you don't know Blender. You will see an orange outline selection around the object without having done anything. And that's kind of not what we need, because the next step means we have to go and import the MDD file now. And that would technically work with something uh, that is under File Import Lightwave Point Cache. I'm not sure if you can see that here, if it's cut off. I hope you can see it. Uh, this thing here that is currently grayed out in my case. And that is because the object is technically kind of not correctly selected. It will come back if you go select off it. So just click anywhere in the empty part and then click on this thing again. And then you'll see that the orange outline has kind of a tiny piece of different color there. I really, this is one of the things that, that really weirds me out about Blender. But hey, with that object now selected with the lighter orange rather than the darker orange twitch um, you can go under file import and now lightwave point cache mdd will show up just to be clear this is an add-on that ships with blender and it needs to be enabled so if you don't see this lightwave point cache option here at all head over to edit and preferences and under preferences there's this add-on section here and so uh, click on that so that it's highlighted in blue and then here in the search field just type in mdd and then you will find something like that the new tech mdd format import export option just tick that box and then it will that that menu will show up just so you know it so it comes with blender it's just not enabled by default i guess is what i'm trying to say so once we've done that head over to import lightwave point cache and navigate to the file that we've just exported from dust which is in obj test sequence and there we go sphere mdd that's the one we can set a start frame and a step, but we're going to uh, leave everything in place here, just like the default, and then click Import MDD. If it's a larger object and a longer animation, this will take some time. Blender will appear to have hung and there'll be a little, you know, circly bit. There won't be any progress messages as such, but it will work. Just let it run its course. It could take a few minutes and then you should see the keyframes in the timeline at the bottom here. And that is cool. So we can now move that timeline slider and we can also see our sphere moving. So it, the import has worked, which is awesome. Now, one thing to note here is that the, the default timeline 
play range is set to 250 frames in Blender. So start is one, end is 250, and your animation may be longer or shorter. Like it's, it's very unlikely to be exactly 250 frames. So in my case, for example, it's just, um, well, it was supposed to be 30. I'm not entirely sure why I have technically 32 frames, but you can see that my last keyframe here is kind of on, on 32. So you can, I suppose you can also just use these sliders here and just go to the last keyframe. This is a step back a keyframe. This is step forward a keyframe. This is play forward and backwards. This is go to the end and go to the beginning of the whole thing. So if you just go slightly beyond your animation and then you just hit the keyframe back, then you're on the exact last thing. And if you zoom in, then Blender will tell you, well, we have this, we're currently on frame 32. It also says that over here, by the way, on the right. And this is the current frame. This is the start. This is the end. So set the end so that it matches the last frame of your animation. Might be more, might be less. And then that play range will be adjusted automatically. We need to do this because this now means the play range will determine how we can export the OBJ sequence. This is really what we're here for, isn't it? So let's do that next. With the object still selected, if you're not sure if it is selected, just select off it and select on it again so that it has this orange outline. We go and head over to File, Export, Wavefront OBJ this time. And this will let us technically export a single OBJ as well as an OBJ sequence. So I'll go back to my folder here and I'll maybe I'll make a brand new folder and call it sequence. Is that spelled correctly? Sequence. There we go. And in here, so in, in sequence, I will call it sphere sequence perhaps. So in here, I have an option at the very top here that says animation. And that's the one that I need to tick in order for an OBJ sequence to be exported from Blender. The other thing that's important is that we're going to go and enable this thing here, which is limit to selection only. That's the only thing you need to do. Geometry and scale, you could tweak that. I'm leaving everything basically too large in Blender just so that it works again in Das Studio. It works perfectly fine. I will show you in a moment. So that is all we need. Selection only because that doesn't export anything other than the thing we've got selected. So no spurious geometry creeping in there. And animation so that we're actually getting an OBJ sequence out of Blender. That is that. Everything else will stay the same. And now we're going to hit export OBJ. And that will take a second, depending on you know how much data Blender is exporting. And that is your OBJ sequence, which is really, really cool. We can check that inside one of my many open folders here. Is it, is it in here? Yeah, there we go. Let's have a look. This is the folder. So sphere, that was uh, just the actual object. This is the MDD cache that we've got in here. And then we have under sequence, we now have an OBJ for every frame of our animation together with a material file. Some OBJ sequence exporters will let you have uh, an OBJ file for every frame of the animation, but only one material file. Blender does it this way. It doesn't really matter because the material description for every, I'll say, animated slash squished OBJ will be the same anyway. But yes, that is what we've got in here now. Just to check it out and test if this actually works, I can bring OBJ sequences into DAS Studio as well with a really cool script called Animorph. That is, I'm going to put a link to the description in there in case you ever needed to bring in OBJ sequences into DAS Studio. That is also possible. That's a script that uh, Marcus Wilm and many other people of the community have developed. I'll go and create myself a brand new scene file here in DAS Studio for that. I've got it installed already. There's a link in the description here. I'm maintaining the GitHub repository for this, and I've just updated this for DAS Studio 4.15. It's exactly the same as DAS Studio 4.14, but you know, just, just so you know. The process of importing an OBJ sequence into DAS Studio is by first importing the first static object in the sequence, which is, in our case, I thought I called it M I called it sphere, but I called it mdd.obj, don't know why. But there we go. That is, set that to the DAS Studio import options. That is essentially the primitive I've created, but now imported as an OBJ. We need to select that object 
and then use Morph Loader Pro to import every object of the OBJ sequence as a morph of this object. We can do that by going to Edit Object Morph Loader Pro up here. It's a little bit of a scary tool, but if content creators use it a lot. It's um, it's quite groovy. In here, you select your morph files. That's in sequence now. So that will not show me any of the materials. They'll only show me the OBJs. So select the first one, scroll to the bottom, shift select the last one, open them all up and choose the convert to DAS Studio, literally the DAS Studio preset here that we've got and hit accept. This will now create a single morph for every of these OBJs in our object, but it doesn't create an animation yet. And that is where this clever Animorph script comes in. So when we run that with the object selected, we just double click that and do excuse the colors and, and all, the, all the craziness on the menu here. None of us really know anything about scripting, so we can't really change it. But you know, there will be a point at which we will we'll be able to tweak this into something that doesn't burn your retinas quite as much. And you know, we'll also try and, and get rid of the spurious characters here. But the left button that says accept, and that will now create a keyframe at every point of the animation, depending on the morph that is in there. So basically on frame one, we have the slider number one set to one. Then on frame two, we have that set to off and the second slider set to on and so forth. So just to just to reiterate what how that works here, if you select that object and head over to parameters, you have this morphs section here. And in it, you have all these sliders. So they're all morphs of where that object is at that point. And if you have a look at that, what happens if I go on frame two, there's uh, and frame three and so forth. These little sliders here, they go and they're being basically switched on and off. And as a result, my, my OBJ sequence is recreated as an actual keyframe animation inside Death Studio. And it works marvelously well. So this is kind of, I know it's not a straightforward script that you can run from DAS Studio, but it is a workaround and I hope it's going to work for you. This is how you can export OBJ sequences via Blender from DAS Studio and then also bring them back in to DAS Studio if this is something you might be interested in. So OBJ sequences all the way in and out of DAS Studio via Blender. I hope this was helpful. If it was or if it wasn't, please let me know in the comments. And if I do get that script, up and running again to make it compatible with DAS Studio 4.15 and back, I will certainly let you know. Have a wonderful day, my friends, and I will see you hopefully next time. Take care. Bye-bye.